Uh, it's just gone 10 to 8. Good morning to you. Now, when we send our children to school, we expect them to get the best start in life. But sadly for some with special educational needs, that isn't always the case. Yet many are being failed by the education system. A new report by a group of MPs found 70% of parents believe to support their child needs is not being put in place quickly enough, with half saying they had to wait for more than a year. 40% say their child's school does not meet their needs. Well, television presenter and vocal coach Carrie Grant and her husband David have four children with special educational needs, and Louise has been speaking to them about their fight and the way they trying to get their children the education they deserve. I feel desperate for my children. I feel really desperate. We fail them as parents because we can't get the services that we need. We cannot get the education that these children deserve. Thank you so much for inviting me to your house. Um, just run me through the family. This one is Olivia. Olivia, our eldest, has um, dyspraxia, yeah. um, ADHD. Talia is autistic. She's really struggled at school. This is Imogen. Imogen is 11, going on 12, and she's autistic, um, and she also has ADHD. And your young boy, he's adopted, isn't he? Yeah, so this is Nathan. He was adopted uh, when he was two, and he has attachment difficulties, which is quite common with um, children who have been adopted. Is it four children and seven... Seven conditions or yes. something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're talking specifically today because there's this new um, parliamentary report, isn't there, out? And how does it, how has it affected them um, at school? It's had a big, a big impact, hasn't it? I think the challenges at school are vast because some schools just aren't even looking at SEN. They don't want to look at SEN. Your biggest fight will be with trying to access services and often, sadly, trying to get the school to understand what it is that you need. And actually, I mean, that's absolutely echoed in the report. 70% of parents are saying that support wasn't put in place quickly enough for their child, nearly 70% waiting for more than six months. What are the biggest issues for you? The biggest issues are, certainly with our children, are anxiety. Yeah. The biggest issues are the fact that uh, they're not a one-size-fits-all and so much of school education is geared towards one-size-fits-all. You know, our children don't necessarily have learning disabilities. They're super intelligent, but they're autistic. I think we're conditioned to judge the quality of our parenting on the happiness of our children. Yeah. That's right. so true. <laughs> That's so true. And actually, you have to find a different yardstick if your children are, are on the autistic spectrum. So what is your judgment of a, of a good yeah. day that you've got through it? A good day is that all the kids are alive. Yeah. And they all go to bed asleep, alive, and not feeling as though they don't want to see the morning. That's a really good day. And you really get a sense of um, having talked to them. And thank you very much uh, to Carrie and David for talking to us about all their children. Um, of, this is a 24-hour thing they're dealing with and the real difficulties with schools. And they did talk about teachers because we're getting lots of messages um, about teachers and talking about, um, you know, how perhaps they can help um, as well with that as well. Because, you know, there is a difficult conversation. We're getting a lot of support from teachers saying they are trying to help. Yeah, I think... Um, but been very much being hampered in, by the system in some ways. Because many families and parents get in contact as well. But as you mentioned, the teachers... So just to give you a flavour of a few of those, Lee says, all the schools I've worked at in over seven years of my career have been dedicated to ensuring SEN children are getting the help they need within a mainstream school. But extensive cuts and underfunding have massively affected how schools work, being understaffed, under-resourced, staff being overworked and stuffing children into class sizes of over 30. Mm. Uh, Carrie talked about training and this is picked up by um, uh, an Anonymous. Um, I'm teaching assistant in a mainstream school working with a severely autistic five-year-old child. I'm one-to-one -one with her every day. She's almost completely uncommunicative, often kicks out and bites at me and other children and adults in the classroom. And they go on to say, I have had very limited training in autism, as have very few staff working within mainstream schools. But if parents wish their children to be within a mainstream school, 
school, the school has no option to accommodate these children in the best way they can. And that's interesting, isn't it, because that parliamentary um, report also talks a little bit about uh, training, doesn't it, and access to training. And one more from Claire. I really feel for parents who are trying to get appropriate education for special children, she says, but please stop promoting the idea that school let me down. I'm a secondary maths teacher. I know how hard we work to accommodate every child into a mainstream school, including those who have special educational needs. Thank you so much for so many comments this week. We're reading them all.